In this lesson, we look at security models that form the foundation for security efforts. While usually seen only in textbooks and certification exams, these models help us understand how to protect data confidentiality and integrity. Security models are largely theoretical. Unlike frameworks, they usually do not provide specific areas of control across entire systems. This enables system analysis without the complexity of including all system detail. Models can be formal or informal. Formal models lend themselves to mathematical analysis. Informal models provide for assessments without mathematical proofs. Although you need to understand these models for the CISSP exam, you won't often see them discussed in risk assessments or other security design and management activities. Understanding them does help with the building of a strong skills foundation for the security professional. Each model has specific goals. The goals of the model are determined mainly by who developed it. For example, models of military orig origin focus on confidentiality. Those of commercial origin tend to focus on the accuracy and usability of the protected data or its integrity. There are two common model components, finite and lattice. The finite state machine model is assumed to be in a series of states. For each state, confidentiality, integrity, and availability are assessed. Using the lattice approach, assessors identify probable subjects, which are users and processes, that will access a resource or an object. The subjects and resources are assigned security levels, and a set of rules is established for how they should interact. Now let's look at some models. The Bell La Padula model is a lattice model that specifies three rules simple security property, star property, and discretionary security property. Let's look at some examples. The simple security property of the Bell La Padula model simply prohibit subjects with an assigned security level from reading data at a higher level. This subject is assigned a security level of secret. He's allowed to read data on the bottom two resources or objects if he has a need to know. He cannot read up. In other words, he is blocked from accessing top secret data. The star security property complements the previous simple security property. It prevents a subject with access to sensitive information from writing that information to a location with less protection. In this example, the subject has a top secret security level, allowing him to access highly sensitive information for which he has a need to know. However, when implemented, the star security property prevents him from writing top secret or secret information to a location only trusted for confidential information. The same protection applies if he tries to write top secret information to a secret resource. The discretionary security principle uses a matrix to help show and manage what specific resources or objects a subject can read. It supports the first two principles. This is an example of how a discretionary security matrix might look. This matrix helps plan for read and write access to resources across departments. It helps to address need to know. Even though subject A might have the right security level for resource 3, information, the data owner may not allow access because subject A does not need access to perform day-to-day -day tasks. Policy would stipulate that all three Bell La Padula security properties be adhered to before access is allowed. The subject has the right level of security, cannot write to lower levels of trust, and is permitted to access the information for daily use. This matrix is a valuable tool for data owners, especially when the subject column contains business roles instead of individuals. That would theoretically deviate from a discretionary access approach, but it meets most real-world situations. Bell Padula closely applies to mandatory access controls used by the government and the military. It focuses on confidentiality and largely ignores integrity and availability. 
The BBIL Integrity Model focuses on data accuracy and usability. It consists of two axioms, simple integrity and star integrity. While the Bell La Padula simple security property denies write down and read up, the BIBA integrity model protects in the opposite direction. The simple integrity axiom protects against a subject from reading lower security levels. It prevents compromising sensitive information with information of a lesser security level. The star integrity axiom prevents writing information to locations or datasets at higher security levels. This protects the integrity of highly classified information by disallowing the integration of information at a lower security level. The Clark-Wilson model goes one step further when data is written. It requires that a subject can only make changes that maintain data integrity. This includes maintaining an audit trail of all changes and, where possible, implementing integrity checking procedures. Separation of duties helps ensure against fraud and mistakes. It requires that no one person perform all required tasks to complete a business function or process. The Brewer-Nash model, built upon information flow models, is concerned with the ethical handling of information. It intends to prevent users with access to objects from accessing other objects that may cause a conflict of interest. This model is commonly used in accounting and consulting firms. A conflict of interest arises when a person has a responsibility or obligation to one organization, but might also have obligations to other organizations that conflict. Conflict also occurs when an employee takes steps to aid one organization when she has fiduciary or other responsibilities to a competitor. In this example, Adam is a consultant and has access to Acme Widgets Company dataset as part of a consultancy engagement. Beta Widgets, an Acme Widgets competitor, wants to engage Adam's employer in a separate consultancy project. Enforcement of the Brewer-Nash ethical wall prevents Adam's employer from assigning Adam to the Beta Widgets project. Doing so might give Adam access to the company datasets of two competitors. This would result in the conditions needed for conflict of interest, even if Adam is a very honest person. This is a simple example. However, there are many ways conflict of interest can arise in an organization. Good policies, procedures, and controls must prevent this from happening as part of overall risk assessments. Well, that's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.